Australia. Look closely at this map of the world. Where do you think Australia is? Where do you think the United Kingdom is? Pause the video now, have a look closely, see if you can identify them on the map. If you have an atlas or even a globe at home, have a go at locating Australia and the UK on them. As you can see from the map on the screen, I have circled in red where the UK is and where Australia is. Have a look at what you notice between the two countries on this image of the world. Are there any similarities or differences already between us here in the UK and Australia? This is the Australian flag. Take a close look at it. What do you notice? What can you spot? Can you see anything you recognise? Pause the video here and have a look at the flag. Some of you may have noticed the Union Jack in the upper left hand corner. Now this is there because it recognises and acknowledges the history of British settlement in Australia. Then below the Union Jack you have a star, the White Commonwealth Star, the Federation Star. Now this has seven points. These points represent the six states and the territories of Australia. Then on the other side of the flag, where you have the five stars, that is a representation of a constellation of stars that can only be seen, be seen in the Southern Hemisphere, which is where Australia is located. Australia is the world's sixth largest country. It has around 24 million people living there, which is not, which is not that much considering actually how large it is. By comparison, we have 65 million people approximately living in the United Kingdom, yet the United Kingdom could fit into Australia 22 times. You've already had a look at the map of the world and seen where the UK is and Australia. If you look closely at this one, we can actually see the difference. So London to Australia is 8,988 miles and it would take you pretty much a whole day to fly from the UK to Australia. As I said previously, Australia is located in the southern part of our world, in the southern hemisphere. Now Australia actually means south so it has quite an appropriate name for where it is located on our globe, in our world. Let's have a little think about the climate in Australia. Now actually, they are pretty much the opposite of us. So they have the opposite seasons. So when we have the winter, they are in summer. When they are in summer, we are in the winter. So for example, they could have their Christmas dinner on the beach as a barbecue because it's their summer. Whereas for us on Christmas Day, it's a bit cold, it's a bit wet, a bit damp. So we almost are complete opposites of them when it comes to seasons. However, I do have to say that they do experience warmer summers than us. Obviously, depending on where they are, because Australia is such a large country that they have quite varying weather just within their own country but in general their summers are a lot warmer than our summers. As I just said their climate can be different depending on where you are within Australia as it is such a large country. So for example they have deserts and in their deserts it doesn't rain very much but in the north of, their, of Australia it can rain a lot. They also have a wet season where they tend to have flooding and then this is often called the monsoon season. And then in territories such as New South Wales and Victoria and Tasmania, they are their coldest areas and they can and usually do get snow in their winters. 
This may take you back to some of your geography lessons in school, where we talk of physical features of the landscape. Now, physical features, which I'm hoping you all remember, is things that are already there. They're made by nature. They haven't been created by man. So let's have a look at some of Australia's famous physical features. So most of Australia is made up of desert called the outback. Now this is where temperatures can be extreme. They can go from being really high, such as 50 degrees Celsius in the day on summer days, then dropping right down to minus 10 degrees during winter nights. Australia also has rainforests. So it has areas of desert, but it also has areas of rainforest. For example, the Daintree Forest is one of the oldest rainforests in the world. And you can actually find, if you went there, more than 1,200 different types of insects. A few more physical features of Australia is the coastline. Australia is obviously an island that you noticed from the globe and the images on the map. It has a coastline all the way around it and is actually quite famous for some of its most beautiful beach beaches. You've also got the Murray River, which is the longest river in Australia. It is 1,558 miles long. And then Australia even has Australian Alps. And this is Australia's largest mountain range. As you can see already, Australia has such a varied range of places from the coastlines to the Alps to deserts and rainforests. Another two very famous physical features of Australia, which often tend to get a lot of visitors, are the Great Barrier Reef. And this is actually the biggest coral reef in the world, said to be containing more than 1,500 species of fish. Then you have Uluru, which is formerly known as Ayers Rock, and this is located in the centre of Australia. Let's move on to have a look at some of the human features. And as you know, these are the man-made structures. Canberra is the capital city of Australia. But there are also lots of other big cities in Australia, such as Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Brisbane. These cities are all near the coast. Alice Springs is the main city in the outback. Australia also has some famous landmarks that are human features, such as the Sydney Opera House. Now, this is um, located in Sydney, which is the oldest city in Australia, and it is one of Sydney and Australia, in fact, recognisable landmarks. You also then have the Sydney Harbour Bridge, which is another famous architectural design originating from Australia. This map just gives you a quick guide as to where those human and physical features are found within Australia. And it also shows clearly how Australia is divided up into its seven territories, which are represented on that Commonwealth star on their flag. So you have Western Australia in the red, the Northern Territory in the green, South Australia in the yellow, you have Queensland, then you have New South Wales where Sydney is located, you have Victoria underneath in the purple, then that island off the bottom is Tasmania. Australia is quite famous for its unique wildlife and its varied wildlife. So some of these animals cannot be found anywhere else in the world. They can only be found in Australia. So animals such as koalas, kangaroos, kookaburras, emus and platypuses. And in fact, some people actually go to visit Australia just to experience its wildlife. Australia is also home to some dangerous creatures and some dangerous wildlife, such as 
venomous snakes and spiders, and two of them are shown here on the slide, a Sydney funnel web spider and an eastern brown snake. Let's have a quick look at some Australian foods. So if you look on your screen now, you have Vegemite, which is a dark brown paste, which some people say is similar to Marmite. So you either love it or you hate it. Apparently, most British people hate it. Then in the middle, you've got Anzac biscuits. Now these are made from oats and honey or maybe golden syrup, coconut. They were originally made during war. Wives, mums would make them for their husbands or their sons or family to take with them because they were relatively cheap to make at the time and they would stay fresh for long periods of time on boat trips. Then you've got a pavlova and this is a meringue cake base topped with whipped cream and fruit. A witchetty grub. Now these were originally eaten by Aboriginal Australians and they've been eating them for years and they actually contain as much protein as an entire steak. You've also got barbecues. Australia is very no well known for their barbecues, maybe due to their weather. And they would enjoy things like sausages, fresh seafood, steak, and then they'd have things like bread, tomatoes, barbecue sauce to go along with it. Actually, in Australia, you find barbecues everywhere. The council would have them in parks or near the beach so people and families can get together to enjoy barbecues. And then also Tim Tams, which is said to be one of Australia's favourite biscuits. Now, your first task. Now, this is a task to show me what you've learnt about Australia. So I want you to plan a trip for yourself, maybe you and your family or your friends when you're older. And you need to plan when you want to go on that trip. What month of the year would you like to go in? So therefore, what clothing do you need to take with you? You need to consider the weather for when you would like to go. How long will it take you to get there? Plan your travel. How far away is it? What part of Australia would you like to go and stay in? And then consider what landmarks you would like to see. Because as I said, Australia is a rather large country. So think about what area you'd like to go to and then what landmarks could you see when you're in that area? What animals would you like to go and meet and see when you're in Australia? And then maybe what animals you wouldn't like to see and meet when you're in Australia and then finally what would you eat during your trip there have fun with your task plan a lovely holiday and I can't wait to see some of your responses as to what your trip to Australia would be like